Good morning, Brockton. Please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the invocation, singing of the national anthem, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Reverend Dr. Beals, would you please give the invocation? Let us look to the Lord. The price of freedom is very costly. Most of us have no idea how or why we are able to live in our great country with such benefits and liberties. But today, we are reminded of our freedom, that our freedom was paid for and continues to be expended by dedicated men and women that are willing even to lay down their lives for our liberty. Lord, we do thank them for the sacrifices of the past and of the present. We thank them for the work that they do and have continued to do for many years. We thank you, Lord, and ask that you would help each one of us to remember never to forget what they have done to support them and to do what we can to remain in the state. We ask God that you would help us also to remember the great sacrifice that you paid for our spiritual freedom and liberty in the sacrifice of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father and God, the sacrifices that these many have made are significant. And yet it is but a reflection of all that you have done for us. As we commemorate our military personnel on this special day, I pray that we as Americans will respect and honor the brave men and women. We pray, Lord, that we will always consider them, that they will look to you, and we ask that you would grant them your grace, protect them from harm, supply them your comfort, and may the grace of God rest on them. Now we ask that you will help us to recognize this this day, that you would be near to us and bless this special ceremony. In the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like to introduce from Brockton High School's concert choir, Yanisa Andrade, to sing the national anthem.
Brandon from Brockton High School's JROTC. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Samantha Blanchard will lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. You can take your seats. Thank you so much for coming. I'm gonna keep this super short so we get through everything before the skies open us up on us. Um, I just wanna talk about how this is my favorite time of the year because the vets who are typically very quiet and they don't talk about their service, this is the time, it's a really good excuse to get them to tell you stuff that they wouldn't otherwise tell you. Um, there's an old joke, it's not my joke, you probably heard it before, but you can't get a World War II vet to talk about their service, but then once they start, you can't get them to stop. Um, it's, it really is true. So when you leave here today, and something I hear in my office, I'm the Director of Veteran Services, something I hear in my office quite a bit is, I wish I asked my brother, my dad, my sister, my grandmother more questions about their service, because once they've passed, you know you had a vet in the family, but you very few people feel like they know enough about that person's service and what they did. And they're all, there's always some regrets there. They didn't ask enough questions. So I'm gonna give you a couple of questions to ask today. You can be a vet you really care about that's close to you or someone you see on the street. We like to wear hats. You can usually tell who we are and what we served in by our hats. Um, what's the funniest thing you remember? And did anybody get in trouble? The ones where somebody got in tr trouble but it's a funny story are the best ones. Tell me about somebody you miss, somebody you were friends with, somebody you spent a lot of time with, somebody you miss, and then ask them what the food was like. A lot of strong opinions about that. Um, so I'd like you to take a look around. Could the vets stand up? Are you already standing? I'd like to thank you for your service, and we're always here, City Hall or War Memorial Building on West Elm Street to take care of you. And I'd like to introduce Mayor Robert Sullivan to give remarks. Thank you, Kelly. I want to first of all just say thank you, thank you, thank you to the men and women that have served our proud nation to make the United States of America the best nation, the free nation in the world. And uh, as someone that has never served, I'm just so thankful today, of course, being Veterans Day, but each and every day, 365 days of the year, we should be thanking the men and women that have served, that are serving, or have paid the ultimate sacrifice to allow us to come together and assemble, or allow us to have an election like we did on Tuesday. Before I, I say a few remarks, I do want to thank the elected officials. I also want to thank uh, specifically two city councilors that are veterans, Moses Rodriguez and Jeff Thompson. Thank you, thank you, councilors. So I, I'm going to ask that we hold a pause until, uh, until I conclude reading the names of the electeds uh, because I do believe that it is going to rain. Council Lodge David uh, Texera, Council Lodge Winthrop Farwell, Council Lodge and our new state representative elect Rita Mendez, Council Lodge and former Mayor Moises Rodriguez, Councilor Maria Tavares, Council President Jack Lally, Councilor Jeff Thompson from the school committee. Uh, Jared Homer, Mar uh, I'm sorry, Councilor Mark D'Agostino, from the school committee, Judy Sullivan, school committee member, Tim Sullivan, school committee member and vice chair, Joyce Azak, our fire chief, Brian Nardelli, our police chief, Brenda Perez, Bill Hill, who's president of our local 144 Brockton firefighters, from our state delegation, Senator Mike Brady, state representative, Michelle Dubois, state representative, Jerry Cassidy, 
And there's three uh, board of trustee members that work each and every day with Kelly at the War Memorial. We have Matt Stanton, Brian Madden, and Miles Jackson. I want to thank each and every one of those folks for being here today. So as a, as, as a, as a guy that grew up in Brockton that uh, never served, uh, I want to just tell you one quick story that impacts my family and my wife's family. My dad's first cousin, Jerry Burke, grew up here in Ward 2, and Jerry got drafted, and Jerry stormed the beaches of Normandy. And then Jer Jerry survived and came back home to, to work in those shoe factories again. And then Jerry enlisted, and he fought in Korea, and he survived Korea. And as a little kid, I remember Jerry being at my Nana's house at 15 Dover Street, which is a house that still stands right next to Charlie Savas's, which is now the Charity Guild. And much like what Kelly said, Jerry just did his duty. Jerry didn't want to talk about the things he saw in Korea, and he definitely didn't want to talk about the things he saw in World War II. But one day on the back porch, he did open up to me, and I was just a little kid, myself and my sister Suzanne. And I remember saying to him, Cousin Jerry, what was it like over there fighting the Germans, the Nazis? What was it like? And mind you, I was, I think, six or seven at the time. And he just looked at me and he said, Bobby, I just did what any American can do. I went over and I fought evil. And I survived, but many of my friends did not survive. And as a little kid, I remember going home that day and saying, he fought evil. And now as an adult, I concur. The brave men and women that are here today, all the veterans, have fought evil. And we wouldn't be here without their, their efforts. Their efforts. And then when they came back, at least those from Vietnam, they weren't welcome back here. So right now, if you served in the Vietnam conflict, I want to say thank you. And everybody here, let's applaud those people. I, I, also, I also would like to, uh, to thank Kelly Young and, and her predecessor, Dave Farrell, because Brockton is a special place. It's the city of champions for a reason. And we were walking down today what made me the proudest as a Brocktonian were the young boys and girls. We all saw them walking with flags on the streets, on Belmont Street, on Main Street, with homemade signs that say, thank you, thank you, veterans. That's the Brockton I know. We're in good hands with the next generation. There's no doubt about that. So today, I ask you, if you have not served, to go up to a man and a woman that has served and just say thank you. And I also encourage you and humbly ask you to go around the city of Brockton Go around the city of Brockton and look at the monuments that we have for those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. I go over to one right near the east side fire station on a regular basis, Tomaselli Square. Joe Tomaselli was the, the great uncle of my wife, Maria. Joe was class president of Brockton High. Joe got, got drafted. Joe got blown up in an airplane over Germany. So these are the facts and, and figures that we could all talk about in life here in America. We all have stories of loved ones or family members or neighbors, and we know this. And we have to really echo the sentiments of what Kelly said. When the greatest generation and those that, that have served pass away, history could be lost. So I encourage you and I ask you to never forget, never forget. And I want to thank the JORTC. I mean, it was unbelievable yesterday at Brockton High. I want to thank you. I want to thank the Brockton High Band and the majorettes, and the cheerleaders, and everybody that, that is here today. But I also want to thank Post 1046 and Commander Graham. This morning we kicked off at 8 a.m. And we were up there, it, was, it, was, it wasn't publicized, we were just there doing it for the right reasons. And that's what Brockton is to me. So today, please take a moment to reflect on how great the United States of America is, how fortunate we are. So many people come here because we are a wonderful nation, but we're only a wonderful nation because of the sacrifices of veterans. God bless the city of champions, God bless our commonwealth, and definitely God bless the United States of America. Thank you. My keynote speaker canceled on me last minute. So a really nice colleague set me up with an even better keynote speaker. His name is Wayne Soares. He's in your program, but he's the television actor and host, former ESPN radio broadcaster, also entertains our troops and will be overseas at the end of this month. Wayne also stars in the, news, the newest national commercial for Topps Baseball and writes a syndicated column for Rally Point titled Veteran Spotlight. 
His annual military golf classic benefits homeless and disabled veterans and his Veterans Meals and Clothing Initiative, which provided over 1,000 meals and 2,000 pieces of clothes to veterans last year. Wayne is the host of the new veterans cooking show, The Mess Hall, and host and producer of the powerful Vietnam documentary, Silent Dignity, both of which are coming to major networks soon. He's a proud member of the Sons of the American Legion, post 125 in North Adams. Wayne? Thank you all very much. I'm delighted to be with you here today, and I'd like to personally thank Kelly Young and my good friend, childhood friend, Troy Clarkson, for this wonderful privilege of being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, on this special day of honor and remembrance, we pay tribute and salute all of our veterans, merchant marines, Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines. My remarks today take on a more powerfully significant meaning because I'm reminded of our World War II veterans, the greatest generation. On this day, I'm reminded of 98-year-old Lieutenant Al Benjamin's 31 missions flown with the 8th Air Force and how he was taken to a hospital by the French resistance after he and his crew bailed out after a bombing mission. And of an old woman telling him of the story of how her two sons were executed by the Nazis as freedom fighters and of her youngest boy that was still in hiding. Telling me through tears many years later, it was a moment he will never forget. I'm reminded of 97-year-old Lieutenant Peter White, United States Army, cheerfully telling me how much of an impact it had on him to be able to see Bob Hope and Francis Langford perform in one of their USO shows, and how much Bob Hope lifted the spirit of the troops. The smile on his face told me it was a memory he will never forget. I'm reminded today of 99-year-old Navy Quartermaster Dick Sherman, amazingly involved in five major invasions in the South Pacific Theater, recalling Okinawa, always on the lookout, always on the controls, the relentless Kami attack, kamikaze attacks, hitting one of their ships 21 times and asking him if he was ever afraid, and his reply, you're damn right. I'm reminded of 99-year-old Lieutenant Flora Magger, Army Nurse Corps, telling me of the 12 to 14 hour workdays, the constant carnage, the screams of the wounded, and how she still hears them at night, and the unforgettable memories of having to close a dead soldier's eyes and the pain of having to write his parents. I'm reminded today of 98-year-old Navy Seaman Elliot Sklar, involved in four major invasions in the European theater, who told of there not being any chance to enjoy the holidays during the war, where his ship was on duty 84 days in succession, and telling me that his ship lived by three words, sleep, eat, survive, and how much it disgusted him that African-American sailors that had fought bravely and earned medals had to sit in the back of a bus. I'm reminded today of 101-year-old Lieutenant Mark Jaffe, United States Marine Corps, recalling being in the first wave at the Battle of Peleliu, the ferocity, confusion, and carnage, narrowly being run over by a tank after throwing himself to the sand and of saving the life of a fellow Marine with quick decisiveness after the Marine was shot in the neck and bleeding profusely, telling me it was a moment he will never forget. I'm reminded today, ladies and gentlemen, of 99-year-old Art Kelly, United States Marine Corps, who recalled coming into Buckner Bay and seeing just three ships, then awakening the next day to see over 3,000 and never forgetting the voice of the ship's chaplain on the intercom saying, God is with us, the second bomb worked. I'm reminded of 98-year-old Private Jim Buchanan, United States Army, remembering dragging his captain through the Ardent Forest under heavy enemy fire and saving the life of a fellow soldier whom he pulled seconds from being run over by a German panzer tank. I'm reminded today of 97-year-old John Bonacquista, United States Navy, recalling the painfully long ride to the beach and the unforgettable look of young soldiers aboard his ship that were about to be sent into battle on Okinawa. Of 98-year-old Corporal Frank Borelli, United States Army, telling me of the intense horrors of the Nazi death camp Buchenwald and being led into a room and seeing where SS doctors made lampshades from the skin of dead prisoners, and his commanding officer stopping in his tracks and whispering, my God in heaven, telling me it's a moment he will never forget. I'm reminded of 99-year-old Private Jim Anacondra, United States Army, telling me of a lonely Christmas Eve at the Battle of the Bulge and of being in a hospital bed next to a young boy that looked just like his kid brother. And when the soldier died several hours later and was placed in the hospital tent morgue, the only body in there, Private Anacondra, asking the doctors if he could go and sit with the boy so he wouldn't be alone on Christmas Eve, telling me through heavy sobs many years later, it was a moment he will never forget. 
of 101-year-old Ed Mayer, United States Navy, telling me that although he was afraid at sea, he felt confident because we knew our boys in the sky, the Air Force, always had our backs. Reminded today, ladies and gentlemen, of 97-year-old Private Jim Duntner of the United States Army, recalling a lonely Christmas Eve in Pierre, a small town outside of Luxembourg, and being taken in by a French family who shared their food and sang Silent Night, telling me through tears 75 plus years later, the goddamn song never sounded so beautiful. I'm reminded today of 99-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Mabel Johnson, Army Nurse Corps, talking about the pain of losing a soldier and of lonely Christmas Eves, and of finding a quiet place during the 4th of July and on New Year's because loud sounds still bother her. And every time she hears the national anthem, it gives her goosebumps knowing the young men that gave their lives. And finally, I'm reminded today of 99-year-old U.S. Army Corporal Chizo Masaconi, telling of the evils of war at the Battle of Okinawa and of an Army dentist pulling the teeth of dead Japanese soldiers to get their fillings, and telling me that if you ever wanted to get killed quickly, all you needed to do was get out of your foxhole at night. To our Vietnam veterans here today who received nothing but scorn, ridicule, and abuse when they returned home, and to those men and women that made the ultimate sacrifice, I read from a plaque dedicated in their honor in Pleiku, Vietnam. I do not think of them as dead who walk with me no more. Along the path of life I tread, they have but gone before. To all of our Vietnam veterans around this great nation, I say to each and every one of you here today, a long-awaited, extremely long overdue, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. God bless all of our veterans, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Is there a fire chaplain here in attendance, Reverend McCoy or Father Westcott? Reverend, Reverend McCoy is a fire chaplain. He's going to do the benediction. Let us pray. Lord God of hosts and good shepherd, we gather here to give thanks to the men and women of our armed forces. We gather again to honor them who by their service have honored and continue to honor you. We give thanks for the sacrifices they've made, for the sacrifices they're making now, sacrifices in our behalf and in behalf of freedom-loving people everywhere. We remember them and we would honor them by upholding the same values they've upheld, values that sustain the many liberties we continue to enjoy this day. We pray, Lord, for those who bear the wounds of war, physical, emotional, and spiritual wounds, for their courage and their strength, we pray, and the healing power of your merciful love. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us all, that we may be free of hatred and hostility. Help us to be free, not for doing whatever we please, but for doing what we must in the interest of the greater good. Guide those, we pray, who devote themselves to the work of a governance for justice and peace. Subdue those who strive for more of violence and mayhem and war. Grant each of us, we pray, O oh Lord, the wisdom and will to be fair and to be kind, to be humble as servants ourselves, to all that is lasting and good and true. We ask all this in your name's sake. Amen.
part. It looks like we might make it to the good part before the rain. This is a, this is, the food trucks are new to Veterans Day. So I know from my time in the military, the only two things that brought me joy on certain days were my paycheck and my meals. So there's no better way to say thank you to veterans than to feed them good food. So I have the sausage guy from Fenway, Moizilla. You might see them uh, kind of down in the Maui parking lot. It's Asian food, like dumplings, um, and local Larry's tacos. If you look, yeah, yeah, food, yeah. If you look on the back of the program, it explains you, you get to choose one truck. I have 100 meals from each truck paid for. We have tickets. Cece, Cece, come out in the middle. Cece is the other VSO for the city of Brockton. <laughs> Navy vet. Don't mess with Cece. And then Brian has blue plaid on. He has the other tickets. And then we have some other volunteers. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep, his name is Matt. For the third time today, his name is Matt. <laughs> sorry, Matt. So Matt and Cece are gonna be running the food truck lines. Uh, so veterans, please start making your way over to East Elm Street and choose the line you want. And after the veterans eat, we'll see what's, you know, what's around for everyone else. And if, you're, if we run out of food entirely, they will be selling uh, at their regular rates, the food trucks. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank everybody who made, obviously, you know, more than just Cece and I made this happen. I want to thank everybody who supported Veteran Services and has been supporting us while we help the vets. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you.